you pick up a book and you almost immediately realize that you're reading it at the right time. Hi friend, happy summer! If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I love books, I love writing and reading and here I have a few of the books that I hope to read this summer and also a few recommendations for this season. Let's get started! So the first book I have here is The Seas by Samantha Hunt. This is possibly my favorite book of all times. I read it a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years ago, and it just changed everything about my reading basically, which is saying a lot. I just fell in love with this story. This is about a girl who lives in a small fishing town and she believes she is a mermaid. I believe this is literary fiction with some magical realism, which is my favorite combination. I've just been loving reading this kind of story, even though I haven't found one that I love as much as this one. But I just noticed that at the end you have some book club questions, so if you want to read this with your book club, there are some really good questions here that you can discuss. But this book, even though it sounds a little silly, like a girl who believes she's a mermaid, it's actually so real. There were so, so many things here that I remember I could relate to and the writing is so beautiful. This is some of the best writing I've ever read and of course writing is subjective, like whether writing is good or bad. But this is some of my favorite writing ever. I was going to read you the blurb, but I think it's not here. So let me see what it says on Goodreads. So the book description is actually not very conventional and to some it might not sound very appealing but I would urge you to give it a try because I just think this book is super underrated and I want more people to read it and to fall in love with it. So in the words of writer Michelle T, the seas is creepy and poetic, subversive and strangely funny and a phenomenal piece of literature, which I agree with, of course. And because this is not like a very happy, feel-good novel, okay, my battery died, which is unfortunate, but I think I was saying that I think this book would be really good to end in September when it's almost the end of summer, but still summer. And the next one I have here is a book that I'm currently reading for the first time. This is called Milk Teeth by Jessica Andrews. I'm just loving this one so much. You know when you pick up a book and you almost immediately realize that you're reading it at the right time? Not just at the right season, but at the right time in your life. And I feel like that's this book for me. I'm so glad that I picked it up. This is about a um, woman or a young woman who follows her boyfriend situation ship her lover yeah who follows her lover to Spain and if you don't know I live in Portugal so there are different countries but there are a lot of cultural and climatic similarities between the two so I was just really happy to you know find a book that is set in the summer in the south of Europe basically. <laughs> When I picked up this book, I didn't know anything about it except from what I've read in the blurb. And when I started reading it, I realized and I was surprised but not unpleasantly surprised that this book is written kind of not in second person because the main character is talking to a you and this you is her lover. So she's basically writing this book for her lover but she's you know, describing everything that happened 
and this has different timelines uh, the main one is the present timeline but then the main character also recounts a lot of things that happened in her childhood and I think it's very easy to read that that was another thing that surprised me about this book it's so easy to read and because it goes back and forth each section is very short but I just want to keep reading I'm really interested in what's going on which is strange because like the characters at least at first the characters weren't very strong in my mind but yeah I'm loving the vibes and it's making me feel like summer and a lot of things that she says I totally relate to and I have some quotes that I highlighted that they are things that I reflected on recently uh, actually I'll read you one because it might make you want to pick this book up I wonder if anyone actually knows what they want truly and deeply without people or situations clouding their judgment I wonder if we ever truly want anything and whether we just respond to the world around us if our feelings are reactive or whether they come from somewhere deeper I think these are things a lot of young adults like myself uh, relate to and they just make us think or at least they make me think and I've been really enjoying it on to the last book that I have started reading and that is Outline by Rachel Kusk I got this book last year and I started reading it last year but it was already kind of late in the summer and I just felt like it wasn't the right time for me to read this I wish I had read it earlier in the season and I'm a really big mood reader so yeah if I'm not feeling it I just you know have to stop and leave it for another time and I'm hoping to read it this summer hopefully at the beach because look at this cover it just feels like it has to be read at the beach I heard someone say not heard I read someone say and I don't remember who it was but she said that Cusks's 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 books should be read in one go all at once in one sitting from what I've read so far I think I agree and I hope I can do that because this book again it's all vibes no plot it's about an older woman which is a perspective that I really appreciate reading from and she goes to Greece I believe for a writer's retreat or writer's workshop I think she's the teacher and I haven't gotten to that part yet or if I have like she doesn't mention it because this book is told through dialogues like she basically only shares the conversations she has with the people she meets and it's really interesting I remember at the time when I first started reading it it was hard to get into it because I just wasn't used to this much focus on dialogue but now that I look back some things that weren't dialogue also stuck in my mind and sorry see okay I don't remember what I was saying but yeah uh, just this book <laughs> so next we have lost on me by Veronica Raimu or Raimu or Raimu I think she's Italian I got this book for different reasons the first one is that it was longlisted or yeah longlisted for the International Booker Prize in 2024 and the second reason is because this book is set in Rome or at least the main character has grown up in Rome and uh, I'm going to Rome this summer so I thought what a perfect opportunity to read this and the third reason is obviously because I liked the blurb Vero has grown up in Rome with her eccentric family an omnipresent mother who is devoted to her own anxiety a father ruled by hygienic and architectural obsessions and a precocious genius brother at the center of their attention as she becomes an adult 
Vera's need to strike out on her own leads her into bizarre and comical situations and a complicated relationship with truth and storytelling. I hope you found this as interesting as I have. And yeah, I just have a feeling this is gonna be about being a woman or like being a young girl and growing into a woman and you know kind of adulting and having to accept the harsh truth of reality i'm not sure which harsh truth she is going to be encountering everything i've read so far from the booker prize has been like pristine writing so i'm just really excited for this the next one i have is south and west by joan didion this is my first Joan Didion. I've been wanting to read her for a long time now and this is just so short. It feels like the perfect book to take with you when you don't want to be too heavy. I think this book, I don't remember because when I was choosing which book of hers to start with, I read like all of the blurbs from her books and I don't quite remember why I chose this one. I think this one is about writing. Here it doesn't say anything. I just have the idea that this book was like from a notebook sh that she kept about her writing. So here it says, South and West captures the thrill of a writer discovering her richest subject, the American mythologies that governed her own romantic girlhood, a yearning for an MGM style heritage that never really was, a yearning that feels freshly perilous in its delusions. We'll see what that means when we read it, but yeah, I'm just really excited for this one. I think it's gonna be light. I'm not sure it's gonna be light to be honest because I have no idea what Joan Didion's writing style is like, but I know she's really famous and a lot of people love them, love her work. So I hope to become one of those people. Next, I have one which I wasn't sure I was going to get for a while, but then I did. And that's Night Swimmers by... Oh, I think this is one of those names that you pronounce wrong every time. Roisin McGuire, but I know Sersha is not Sawyer C, it's Sersha, so Roisin. Maguire raisin. I'll have to figure out how that's pronounced. This is an Irish name, I think. I think the author is Irish. At least the book is set in Ireland. That was one of the reasons why I picked this book up, because I love Ireland. I don't know if I've mentioned here before that I studied abroad in Ireland, and I just have like a love for the country and for the culture, for the literature, like I picked this up for that reason first and the second reason was because of the title, like Night Swimmers it just sounds like maybe not adventure but kind of like freedom and a world we don't often get to visit because, you know, swimming at night is not that common and if it says night swimmers, it feels like these people are living a life that I want to know more about. I think this is about a woman who I think her job is basically to do all the touristy things in her small village. It says here she fills her days with swimming, fishing, kilting and baiting the tourists who arrive from the city with more money than sense. So that's the kind of life she leads. And then one of those tourists arrives, his name is Evan, and they get trapped in this village because of lockdown. So this is a pandemic book, but I don't think it's gonna be about the pandemic itself. I don't think it's gonna be very heavy on that side. Yeah, I read that this is a light read and I found it completely by accident, like it wasn't on Instagram, it wasn't on Pinterest, it wasn't on YouTube, I found it at my local bookstore and I just love it when that happens. So yeah, I had to pick it up and I'm really excited to read it. 
So this book is last summer in Rome. No, uh, in English the title is Last Summer in the City, but in Portuguese it's translated into Last Summer in Rome. Uh, and the reason why I chose to buy this in Portuguese is because first the Portuguese book cover is so much better than the English book cover. I think you can see well, but I'll show you both and you decide if you agree with me. But that was one of the reasons why I chose to read it in Portuguese. And the second reason was because this is by an Italian author and Italian is very similar to Portuguese. So I thought like the translation into Portuguese must keep the meaning of a lot of the things this person, this author was trying to say. That's just what I thought. I don't know if it's true, but again, I want to read it in Rome. If I only have to pick one book to take with me, it will be this one, because this is a love story and it's set in Rome. But what do I know about this book aside from the fact that it's a love story? Not very much. I know it's a classic of Italian literature, it says here. I love love stories but I don't really read romance books like because I think nowadays the genre of romance is filled with romantic comedy and uh, that's not really my style. I do love the 2000s romantic comedy movies but in terms of reading I just prefer to read something more heart-wrenching and real and serious and I hope this one is like that. I'm kind of hoping it will be something like, uh, how do you call it? Before Sunrise and Before Sunset and Before Midnight, like that trilogy. I don't know why, but I'm kind of hoping it will be something like that or something like One Day by David Nichols. I I'm really excited for this one. I hope I will love it. <laughs> so next we have a book that I've owned for quite a while now and I haven't started it yet because this is a summer book, like look at that cover, it just screams summer. So this is The Talented Mr. Ripley, it's the only thriller or like suspense novel that I have here. So this is about Tom Ripley and I think he's kind of um, fake. I think he's gonna fool some people and make some trouble get involved with the world of the rich, something like that. And this is set in Italy again, I think. How come? I'm not sure right now. Uh, even if it's not in Italy, it's somewhere in the south of Europe. So that screams summer by itself. I don't really remember anymore what made me get it, aside from the beautiful cover. I think it will be a fun break from the other books which are different styles but some of them are also kind of similar i think this one will be a nice break from literary fiction at least last but not least a book that i okay so this is giant let's start by saying that this was also long listed for a Booker Prize, but this was the 2023 Booker Prize. I already started reading this, but I started reading it in like the winter and I quickly realized that no, I need to wait for the summer to read this. But from the few pages that I've read from this, I think this is gonna be a new favorite of mine because I think I have never related to something someone said more than to what this narrator has said in the first few pages. I was in awe at the author's bravery exploring this topic because it's a topic that I relate to a lot and it's a topic that I have a really really hard time visiting even in my own mind, my own thoughts and this author just put it all on the page and I feel like this person is basically writing for me. <laughs> So yeah, at the time I stopped and I decided to leave this story in the summer and I really can't wait to get into it, but I just know that once I do, it will be heavy. 
I, I don't know if I will cry, but I know my emotions will be all over the place reading this book. And I think that's amazing, honestly, when a book can make you feel like that and you just know why this person wrote this book, you know, even if you don't know. <laughs> that's the last book I wanted to recommend to you guys and the last book in my summer reading list. But of course, I have already told you that I am a mood reader, so I don't know in which order I'll be reading these books. I don't know if I'll be reading them all this summer. I do hope so, because I just feel like the summer is such a great season to read and I do hope that I can make a lot of time for that. Let me know if you found any of these interesting and if you think our tastes match, if you think I will love or hate any of these books. Also, let me know what you're planning on reading this summer because I'm always looking for recommendations and I feel like I'm still exploring this new side of literature like literary fiction and women's fiction and no plot just vibes fiction <laughs> and I'm really loving it so I hope to find many more books that I can fall in love with and share my thoughts on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.